Good day. I'm Robert Peterson, the director of the sales decathlon. I'm here today with Paul Lampier from Miller Hyman. We wanted to discuss the second event in the sales decathlon, which is the pre-call strategic analysis. Before, obviously, you talk to any clients or go on a site visit, you just can't walk in with your good looks. You need to make sure that you're prepared and you anticipate and prepare as best you can before you engage the customer. And Miller Hyman just has to be an expert at sales performance for the last 40, 40 years um, in many different countries. So um, Mr. Lampier was good enough to come. Hopefully the training, the short training video will be helpful to your preparation for the sales decathlon. Welcome, Paul. Thank you, Dr. Peterson. Um, so Miller Hyman does have an approach that they've been using for years and teaching many, many, people, many sales courses and, and individuals on what to do in, uh, before they walk into a call. Can, and then it is available on the website, the grading mm -hmm. criteria and outline. Can you walk us through a little bit of that and explain uh, a little higher level analysis, like what's a, what's a buying influence might, what, what, what might that entail? Okay, well there's typically, in, a, in any kind of sale interview, you're gonna find three types of buying influences that are always gonna be there. Uh, one is the economic buying influence, and that person is the, the person who controls the money. Okay. It's their budget, they write the check, they make the final decision on whether it's a go or no go. Okay. Uh, another person you're going to run into is a user buyer influence. And that person is really the person who's going to use your products or services. Or they're going to supervise people that are going to use your products okay. or services. So they're obviously keenly uh, interested in what you're, what you're proposing. Uh, the third is a technical buying influence. Technical buying influence really looks at specifications. Uh, that could be, take a lot of different, uh, different approaches. For instance, it could be specs. Literally, does it do this or does it do that? And very specific to what the product does. Okay. It could also be things like for purchasing, it might be time, terms, and conditions. Uh, if you've right. got contracts, it could be a, a lawyer, the legal department that has to look at the technical aspects of contracts. Okay. So that there's a lot of different variations on that technical buying theme. The last person that's there or that you want to develop is not always there as a coach. And that could be any one of those people. It could be someone from outside the organization. But a coach really helps you decide where to go, how to do it, mm -hmm. uh, gives you guidance because they're interested in your in, in you being successful with your uh, sales approach. Okay. So there's a lot, obviously, a lot going on. That's why you have to identify right. these players mm -hmm. before you before you stroll in. The customer concept. Can you explain uh, how Miller Hyman uses that terminology? Absolutely. The customer concept is is a key thing to understand. Every and this is based on the individuals. It's not based on the organization. Okay. Next step is the sales sales call objective. The salesperson should have an idea of what they what they need or what they want when they head mm -hmm. into that. Can you talk to me about that? We have, they absolutely need to have a plan. They have to go in there with the understanding of what they're going to do. But especially important after that is what do they expect the client to do for them? Okay. Right. So at the end of the call, you want them to commit to something mm -hmm. to you so you know this process is moving forward. Okay. That's that sounds like a pretty good thing to have as you stroll into a into a into an account. Next step in the process would be the the gaining the gaining information. Obviously a bunch of questions. Can you talk to uh, everyone about about uh, what's the best tools for that? Well, it's really important to uh, you know have those planned out, have those written down, okay. right? You want to get some type of confirmation of why you're there. Ask questions, new information questions, uh, get new information that you're not aware of yet. Uh, also get uh, what do they feel about that. In mm -hmm. certain cases, you want to know not just that the, that's important to them, but why is it important to them. Okay. Right? And then whenever you ask a question, the biggest thing that you need to do is listen for the answer. Right? <laughs> we have a tendency as salespeople to talk a lot. Talk a lot. Right? Okay. And so when they answer, listen for the answer. Ask a question, listen. When they answer, listen a little bit more and see if they're done. Okay. Uh, and take good notes. Take, take good, good notes. notes. That's a key thing. Right. And uh, the last two things were are, are anticipate uh, objections. You know, going in that you know typically clients ask this or push back here or have needs like that they mm -hmm. can't believe and whatnot. So you want to anticipate those and plan for those because you know they're coming. Right. Absolutely. You hear an objection. Uh, biggest thing is first, don't blurt something out right away. Yeah. Ask a question. Why is that important? And okay. then go from there. Okay. And certainly, uh, proof statements and evidence to support your claims. Uh, will be key in planning any call. What do you want to bring with you in order to make support your... Absolutely. And you bring, whether, whatever it might be, you know, you're trying to say that you can help them with their concept or fix, accomplish, or avoid, whatever it is that you think you can do to help them, you need to have some kind of proof source, whether it's literature, whether it's a demo, whether it's a customer referral, okay. whether it's uh, articles that have been written about your organization in the trade press, whatever it might be, but be sure you have some proof of what you're saying. The business, many, many, many years, we've given just a few moments, uh, you know, an overview.
but uh, to do a good pre-call um, plan, um, <clears throat> it's it's the ROI on it will be significant. And I'm glad that you came in and outlined for everybody some of the tips and hits of the best practices. Absolutely. Thank you, Thank you very much. Welcome.